Oh, I really do like it when you stop by. I'm John Zadar. This is April 20th, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we talk about OTC and penny stocks. Now, today is April 20th. 420. That's a symbolic number for cannabis users. So today is a symbolic holiday, if you will. And maybe that's why there was a lot of well, I don't want to call them cannabis stocks because there's a lot of stocks in that sector now that have nothing to do with cannabis. MDMA, ketamine, LSD, DMT, and they're all throwing in there right now. Well, there was a lot of activity today in that area, and I got three companies totally uniquely different from the others all in that sector that I want to share with you that we're running today with Catalyst. Let's see what I got. First 420 goodie we got is ticker BLOZF Cannabis Technologies. And we're going to be doing our initial due diligence on the OTCMarkets.com website, my go to site for all OTC stock information. The SEC and FINRA update this every single day. So why waste my time on Google looking for information when I know it's right here, right? So BLOZF finished the day just under 51 cents and just over 10% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current, but we are absent of a verified profile and a transfer agent. These are important. These are green ticks that we normally see up here and make me feel comfortable. The absence of them doesn't bring any comfort. I'm not quite sure why this is. I know this company has been around, well, at least since 2018. So what does this company do? Well, Cannabis Technology is a leader in marijuana breathalyzer development for law enforcement and the workplace. Cannabis is actively developing breath testing technologies in the pursuit of bringing durable portable tools to the market to enhance the detection of marijuana impaired driving offenses. There you go. Now they've got one other company they're in competition with. That would be Hound Labs. Hound Labs is also making a THC breathalyzer. Both companies are getting close, but neither one of them is right there yet. And imagine whoever gets the first mover advantage, every law enforcement agency across the country, every car is going to have one of these in it. So it's going to be a big item once they get it out there, but they just haven't got the kinks worked out yet but they're getting close. But there was news today with this company and funny, it did have to do with a breathalyzer, but not with marijuana. And we're gonna cover that here in just a second. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she normally does 74,000 shares, not a whole lot more. She did about three times that much, 222,000, which I'm surprised. I don't think people took in the news today. Now, it's not a guaranteed promise, but it really has a lot of potential. What is the share structure here? Oh, goodness. All right, so we got 114 million in the outstanding shares. They don't tell us the unrestricted. They don't tell us to float. I don't know why that is. So I'm going to go look it up for you. There you go. Or is it over there? Well, it's, it's up there somewhere. Now you know the flow. Let's see if they have any financials. I don't think they're making any money yet because they're still devising this product. All right, you see that F right there? This is a Canadian company. You can see back here, they tell you that they're from Canada. And that F tells you that they're a foreign company. Now, a lot of times, even if they have their filings, which they've got filings, they're pink current, so they are filing on time. And they should show up here. Let's see if we have any filings here. No, see, we got nothing here, including no financials. This happens when they're filing on their side of the border, when they're filing in their country. So we just don't have that information on this site, though it is available somewhere. But as I said, they're in development R&D stage, so I don't believe they have any revenues at this time. So let's go take a look at that news. Now, the company hasn't got a lot of news, at least not on the books. I know there was a lot more news for this company because I used to post their news on my Penny Pot Stocks Facebook page back in 2019, so I know it exists. Just isn't here. What we got here are four pieces of news, all from this year, 2022, and all of them really have to do with the advancing of the THC breathalyzer. But the news today took a turn. It was a little bit different. Now, I thought this was about the THC breathalyzer. I was close, but wrong. Cannabis has developed a contactless alcohol 
breathalyzer for vehicles. New standards are coming for new vehicles in the USA and Europe. I was not aware of that. Cannabix Technologies has developed a cutting edge contactless alcohol breathalyzer for vehicle cabins. The acronym is CAB. The company has entered into a non-disclosure agreement with the Tier 1 Global Automobile Parts Manufacturer. The first proof of concept prototype of the cab has been developed for a vehicle cabin with specialized placement of such technology. The company has not entered into any contractual relationships for its cab technologies yet, though the company has filed for a provisional patent. So what exactly is this? Well, they don't get real particular, but I think I've kind of figured this out. The Cannabix cab has been designed for specific placement inside the vehicle cabin, normally near the driver, but can be put anywhere in the car that you want. The cab provides a warning, pass or fail results along with blood alcohol content level on the screen for the driver to see. This kind of technology holds potential to be integrated with interlock systems and can be used in many settings including automotive, heavy duty equipment including heavy transport vehicles, watercraft and workplace monitoring. And this is the interesting piece because I was unaware of this. In the United States, November 2021 Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act was passed by the House of Representatives and called for new cars to come equipped with technology that will detect alcohol in the breath. Now that's a big deal. If every car has to have it, and this is the first company I've heard that has it. So think of it this way. Instead of a straw or a tube, there's just a little device that catches your breath, breathing. You know, it's there. It can monitor the air. Now maybe you got to get close and breathe on it. But I get the feeling that it's going to be a little more sensitive than that. So they can actually, so that you can't have the passenger breathe on it and then you with your alcohol breath sit behind the wheel. You know, it, you, you would permeate the vicinity and it would catch you. So that's what they got. They're working on the THC breathalyzer, but it looks like they've got something that may hit the market faster. Something they've already been able to work out in a prototype. So let's go see what the chart looks like. It was only a 10% gain at the end of the day. Was it bigger than that at the start? And will it get bigger from here on out? That's what we really want to know. All right, we're over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. You can have it too. Not mine. Go get your own. Go over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for a free trading account. They're not going to bug you for any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Shh, I didn't say that. Just keep your account open and you can use this just like I do. So this is BLOZF six month four hour chart. We got a high bubble here of 89 cents, a low bubble here of about 39 cents and currently we're at 50 cents. She's been under the 200 most of this time and here recently over the last three months has really been working hard trying to get on top of it without a lot of success. However, today's push looks pretty optimistic. Let's come down to that 20 day one hour view. So she's pushed herself. 20 days ago on top of the 200 has been floating across it and on top of it until today. I can see the volume has been increasing ever so slowly, but it is getting stronger. And we had a jump from about 46 cents to 57 cents, and then it fell and it looks like it lost more than 50%. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute look. Well, here is the appearance of our 200. It's just come into the picture like three days ago. Price was about even with it. Once it appeared, it decided to run from it. Ah, went to a low bubble, came up very quickly, but it stayed low until today. And you had a big jump and that happened in 15 minutes. First 15 minutes of the day and then it fell away. We had a bounce back, but it was a lower high. It did not get higher than that high bubble, so chances were it was going to continue to fall, and it did. And it definitely got lower than its 50%. If you mark off the bottom of where the surge starts and the top of the surge, and then find the center, you can either eyeball it or just do the math, but we can see right about there, that's close. So she came down, hit the 50% mark, went up and came down below it. Now I consider a stock to be strong if it keeps more than 50% of what it put on the table that day. If it comes down lower, not only does it appear weak, but it shows signs of weakness and it normally starts falling down. And this very well could come right back down to the 200. Let's see if it's sitting on anything if I go back on the hour. 
it is sitting on the 10. Right there, it's sitting on the 10. Because you come over here to the five minute, it does look like it's just hanging there in midair and it's just gonna go ah, and fall all the way down like the Donkey Kong man. No, 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 it's sitting on something right there. Uh, MACD is on the wrong side of the board, under the signal line, blue under the yellow line. RSI is shallow right now, and the CCI is falling down towards the red. So it all looks pretty weak right now. So it doesn't look like it's going to take off tomorrow. But folks, they've got two devices now. They've got the THC breathalyzer, which they've been working on for a long time. There's no doubt about that, but they're very, very close. They're racing Hound Labs. First mover, whoever gets it out there first, just think of how many police cars are out there. And won't every police car probably want one? That is a ton of business. And then if it works, isn't it going to be wanted around the world probably? Most likely. Then they're going to have the alcohol one that could be built into cars. Car factories could just buy the rights to use it and pay this company royalties and every car will just have it built in. So they've got a lot of potential here. So you may want to put BLOZF on your watch list or do some more DD and see what you think because when it does happen, when they finally come out and say it's done, it may be too late to get in. This thing may rock it off. All right, folks, let's go take a look at that next stock. The next 420 delectable we're taking a look at is DELCF, Delic Holdings. They finished today the just over 8 cents, 0 0.0829, and just under 73% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, called the better tier because they have to audit their financials. That makes them more trustworthy and transparent. Did you know that most pinks do not use a CPA? The numbers they give us are the numbers they give us, so we got to just take their word for it. Here we got a CPA who is licensed. This we can definitely trust. They have a verified profile, but I do not see a verified transfer agent. That's something we do want to see. They have independent directors. They needed those when they uplisted from the pink to the QB. And if they have aspirations to go to the NASDAQ, they're going to need them again. Now, this company isn't exactly in the cannabis sector, it's in the psychedelic sector, if they have their own sector yet. Delix Holding Corp. is a psychedelic wellness corporation committed to bringing safe, legal, and science-backed benefits to all. They work with ketamine, LSD, psilocybin, uh, MDMA, these drugs that have been pretty much street drugs, never seen as having medicinal benefits, they have found ways to get those medicinal benefits out to the people and they're making money doing it. And they had news today and it was moving. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she normally does 137,000 shares. Today she did 857,000. Not a huge jump. But I'm going to tell you the truth, folks. I mean, I, actually, I just don't want to tell you the truth. I want to show you. Look over here. This is all the stocks across the entire market, the advancers. Look over here at trades. Okay, this is how many trades are in this company today. <laughs> now look, there has not been a heck of a lot of them. That's a warrant. That's a warrant. Uh, there's the one we're looking at right now. And we're all the way down to 58%. There was not a lot of activity. Normally you see lots of them that have hundreds. There's another one that is also cannabis. So it was a slow day today. There was not a lot of shares being moved. Matter of fact, oh, I got to, we've got to uh, update this. It has to be more than that. 7.5 billion shares, folks. That's what we actually did today. Not a lot of shares. So that explains why everything isn't moving super fast. What is the share count on this company? Okay, they're going to make us guess a little bit. Outstanding shares is 75. We don't have the unrestricted shares, which is pretty much the best you're going to get when it comes to the float. This was just a couple days ago, so I'm going to take this one as gospel. <laughs> I don't like to do that, but it says it's 52 million shares. Not super low, not super high, just right there in the middle of the breadbasket. How about our financials? They say they're making money, so let's see this. What? Where's their money? I see nothing there. How about an adjust? 
They're just starting to make money. Just got it going. This is from June of last year and September of last year. There should be another one for uh, December and the first one for this year as well. They don't get those out. They're going to be late. So they were doing $183,000 at the end of September last year. Let's see if those... Uh, Disclosures are over here. Uh, no, nothing since November and nothing down at the bottom. So they've got two financials that they're going to have to get out here rather quickly. So let's take a look at that news. All right, so they've got lots of news. It goes all the way back. And I'm telling you, folks, this company has been working hard setting up these ketamine wellness centers. They made a deal some time back. You're going to see it covered in the news that we'll look at. But they made a deal with uh, a ketamine wellness center and got these wellness centers opened up in Oklahoma and Arizona, I think it is. The news will straighten me out if I'm wrong. But they opened these up and they started this service where they make people feel better who have emotional problems, if you will. I really don't know how to explain it. The news will go more into it. So they've got lots of news, how they've been building this business up all around the same thing, trying to get out as many dispensaries, uh, wellness centers as they possibly can. And this piece of news here really covers a lot of the details. Now, this isn't as current as it could be, but I compared it to the most current one, and it is, it's got most of the information here. It says 12 clinics. They've actually got 13 now, but they give us more information in this one than they did the most current one. So we're going to look at this one. So this is a shareholders update, if you will. So they tell us that Delic currently has 12 clinics operational today with 15 more opening in the next 18 months. The clinics are strategically located in secondary cities to improve accessibility. That means they're not putting them in the big cities, they're putting them just outside of the big cities and smaller cities so the big city people can come out to the little cities. The company has a current revenue run rate in excess of $9 million right now and are running a positive EBITDA. Delic closed the acquisition of Ketamine Wellness Center, KWC, in November 2021 and now operates the largest, most profitable chain of mental health clinics in the U.S. with KWC and Ketamine Infusion Centers. KWC has been operating profitably and expanding significantly with 2020 revenues in excess of $3.5 million on track for $5.1 million in 2021. So that is what we should see when that annual report comes out here. This brings Delic's Pro Formula annualized revenue to an excess of $8 million. Now I want to show you how they're making their money because they actually broke it down for us in their latest disclosure. This is uh, what they do, their wellness centers. Under KIC's business model, treatments consist of six sessions over two week period at $400 per session. That's $2,400. Followed by a booster session either monthly or every other month thereafter at $350 a session. Or you can get five sessions in a row at $750 a session. Normal clinics can administer about 120 treatments per month and they've got 13 right now and they've got 15 more coming up. So you can take that 120 treatments, multiply it times $400 a person and the big deal here is both Medicare and insurance companies provide reimbursement for ketamine treatments. Yeah. You can't get that with cannabis. Vets want to get cannabis to help their pain. No, nobody will pay for it. But get some LSD, some MSDA, or some ketamine. Heck yeah, the government will pay for that. You know why? Because it's more expensive. Cannabis is cheap. It is a cheap fix. And nobody wants it to replace the expensive market that they've got going right now. That's the way I see it. All right, back to that news. What else we got down here? Delic executed a number of key acquisitions last year to accelerate the growth trajectory of their company. And this is what the business is about. Delic's Labs, a federally 
authorized psilocybin and cannabis research laboratory focused on extraction, analytical testing, and chemical process development. They also have their ketamine infusion centers, their ketamine wellness centers, the largest national chain of wellness clinics in the USA with 11 clinics across nine states and more than 60 medical professionals and employees. And that is going to run them, as I said, up to $9 million if they keep going the way they're going. And it could be even bigger. Delic is now the owner and operator of the largest, most profitable chain of mental health clinics in the U.S. with 12 operational today and plans to open an additional 15 clinics in the next 18 months. So that'll give them 27 clinics at $400 a visit with 120 visits minimum a month it starts to add up. It starts to add up big time. And that is just for that one thing that they're doing. They got a lot more going on. There was a lot of news there, folks. There was just no way I could possibly take you through all of their news. But most of it has to do with them hiring all those medical professionals, 60 of them. But they've been out there talking and educating people about what they do. Lots of this news is about that. So I see a lot of of headway for this and to be honest they're probably going to do better than cannabis the psychedelic market as I said is getting a lot of respect and love from the federal government it's getting onto the Nasdaq onto the New York Stock Exchange where cannabis stocks in America are not allowed there yet these companies are getting bank loans they can put their money into the bank cannabis cannot these are moving fast. They're getting ahead of cannabis right now. So you're going to want to take a look at these psychedelic companies. They are going to run. They are going to make a lot of money. Let's go take a look at the chart and see if that can make us a lot of money. Not an impressive chart by any means, much like the cannabis charts. It has been falling for six months. This is DELCF six month, four hour chart. We had a high back here of over 30 cents and a low of just over three cents. Been under the 200 the entire time. Under the 50, under everything. If we come in close, you can see the price is under the 10. That is very depressed. And I'm going to presume this low bubble was the catalyst. I don't recall seeing any news on this day. And it happened pre-market after market, which is a bit curious. So she did take off, put the price on top of the 10, on top of the 20, on top of the 50, and almost touched the 200-day SMA. Technicals all look strong. And our volume is increasing. See how it's smaller? getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. So the volume is growing. That is a good technical sign to pay attention to. Coming down to our 20 day, one hour look, we got nine cents at a high. Our 200 day SMA just came into the picture here. And as soon as it did, it was pretty much even with it. It started to push away. I don't know what that's about, but it got all the way down to that low bubble and pushed herself off. Now, something I didn't mention, it just occurs to me here that I didn't show you the last piece of news that came out today. Now, it wasn't what most people would consider catalyst news. It was an announcement of an investors conference coming up. Now, these are catalysts, folks. When these investor conferences are over, you got to expect a bump the next day or the day after that, or maybe the Friday that comes after that when people get their paycheck. The whole point of these investor conferences is for the management to spur up excitement for people to want to invest in the company. And if they did their job right, you're going to see people investing right after them. So that's what today's news was. Now, I can't say it's a reason for it to run today, but there you go. <laughs> it is running. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. So she was climbing here for, well, she went sideways for a couple of days here actually and took off today. She hit her high here at, oh boy, that was like noon, 1230, was climbing most of the day, held her gains, don't have to draw her top and bottom, she held her gains and she's going sideways. Now what I see in this is that she was under the 50 and when she finally broke the 50, she came down and bounced right there on the 20. She went under the 20 here but did not make it to the 50 came back to the 20. So the 20 seems to be the SMA it pays the most homage to. Now it did leave the 20 for the 10 when it got light and airy and started to climb. Now it has a choice here. It can either go sideways and wait for the 20 day SMA, the one it wants to pay homage to, to come to it 
which is what it's doing, or it can continue falling to touch the 20 it's desiring to touch and then bounce. When I see a price hang up at the top waiting for the friendly SMA to come to it, I consider that a sign of strength. So this does look good to me. In saying that, all of the technicals are bearing down right now. So when I say it looks good, I don't mean it looks good for a run or a surge. I'm just saying she's holding her gains. It was a legitimate gain today. She didn't throw hardly any of it away. Now I'm not looking at DELCF as a surge play, a day trade, really not even a swing trade. No, I'm going to put this out there as a long hold. Psychedelics are going to be great, folks. They're getting a lot more respect than cannabis. They're getting on the NASDAQ. They're getting on the New York Stock Exchange. They're being covered by Medicaid and Medicare. They're being covered by insurance. The vets are being allowed to use them. And they are actually helping people with psychological disorders and traumas. So this is going to move forward. People want to help the psychologically impaired, right? They want to help them. So I see this company with a lot of other psychedelic companies getting a lot of growth in the future. So keep DELCF on your watch list. They're growing at a nice clip. They're only in a couple states right now. Do some more DD. This company is definitely worth it. And there's a lot of news there, folks. There's a lot of news. All right, let's go take a look at that third goodie we got for 420. So the last 420 stock we're looking at should take care of that cotton mouth for us. This is SIPC, SIP Industries. Finished today at 0065, just over 38% gain. Pink Current has all her green ticks over there, so she looks good. Now, this is another one of those companies I am pretty familiar with because, well, to tell you the truth, I came into trading in 2018 strictly for cannabis. That was all I knew. Since then, my world's opened up, right? But I knew all the companies back in 2018, 2019 because it was all I studied. And Sip C was one of them. They were making a hemp beer, major hemp. And they came out with an IPA that they called H-IPA hemp IPA, right? And that is what they were doing. And then there was silence for a while. I haven't heard much from them because there just hasn't been any news until this year. And they have expanded their market and their product line and they've made some deals. So there's actually been a lot happened since January and I see a lot going on here with this company. And I'm going to share it all with you right now. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Boy, did anybody do over a million shares today that we looked at? No, no, it was a hard day. My goodness, 159,000 shares she normally does. Today she did 400,000 more, 579,000 total. Wow, not very impressive. Thank goodness for those gains. What is the share structure on this company? Oh, 298, let's just call it 300 million in the float. Financials, I'm believing we got to see something. Oh, come on, $2? Two, no, 2,000. <laughs> That's three zeros we put behind there. But still, really? Let's see what else we got here. Oh my goodness. So I'm not real sure what's going on with this. We don't see shell risk and we don't see shell. A zero means they are filing. They are filing, they're just not making any money. So I'm not too sure what happened with their major hemp hypa beer i would have thought it was selling right now maybe that's why it went quiet because there just wasn't a market for hemp beer i honestly don't know i don't drink beer so i don't drink hemp beer but what they're doing now is different so let's uh back away from that no money that is curious 415 the annual report just came out all right i'm a little curious folks they were showing no income there this is the most current report i am just going to zoom down to some numbers here just to see what we got going on uh that's going to be all the share structure Whoop, back up let's see what we got sales all right sales at the end of 2020 there are no extra zeros to throw on this so that was less than ten thousand. That's what they showed us, right? $2,000 is what they showed us. Uh, is there any extra news we can get here? Net loss, $44,000. Mm, no, no. So 
I'm not sure why they're not making any money right now, but they're not making any money right now. Hopefully the news we're going to go take a look at is going to make the difference. So let's go take a look at that news right now. Now the company has a lot of news, just not a lot of current news. Right here up, these five pieces are from 2022. This is the only one from 2021 one from 2020 and then 2019 so i mean there really was not a lot of information coming out but the first piece of news that came out was a deal that they made with calypso extracts let me show you what this is about because this is going to change the entire focus of the company from their hemp beer they tell us here that sip industries is a multifaceted corporation specializing in the manufacturing and distribution of commercial and consumer products in the cannabis industry they have announced that they have acquired a minority interest in a Tulsa, Oklahoma based company, Calypso Extracts. They've gotten a 5% stake in the company and they can increase it to 10% within the next 12 months. Now, I know 5%, 10% doesn't sound like much, but I think they have their eyes on something about the company that is revealed further down. Calypso is a vertically integrated manufacturer of a wide variety of cannabis products ranging from extracts, concentrates, and edibles to bulk and customized nano emulsified THC and CBD concentrates used in beverages and edibles. Folks, that nano emulsified, that's a new technology. That was created since 2018. THC and CBD and all other cannabinoids are oils. And oil does not mix with water. So it wasn't working. They had to come up with new science to actually get THC and CBD to be able to mix with chocolate properly and water properly. And this breaks down the molecules so itty bitty tiny that they not only dissolve in water, but they have no flavor. They've actually got the bitter taste taken out of them. So this is a new science that they're capitalizing on now. And let me tell you, from 2018, when we were hearing about this, we couldn't wait till this day came. It's here. The company has applied for its certified cannabis manufacturing license with the Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority. Oklahoma has just gotten into cannabis, by the way, and is in the final stages of approval. You can think of this as first mover advantage. Calypso operates a 10,000 square foot facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which has adequate room for future expansion. Calypso currently works with the largest cannabis wholesaler in Oklahoma, Argent Cannabis. They sell their products online and directly to dispensaries through Argent. And Argent is already serving over 2,000 dispensaries. And that's what I think this deal was about. The 5% that they invested got their foot in the door so that they could have this distribution. SIP Industries is also exploring a partnership with a Los Angeles-based cannabis manufacturer and distributor to produce a range of edibles and beverages. Additional information will be provided as we progress. And that's what this is about. They've got the chemical, THC and CBD. You can put it in anything you want because it has no color, has no flavor, has no taste, and dissolves just like that. Now, this company has more to offer than just a distribution. Oh, yeah, they do. Matter of fact, let's just jump into the next piece of news here. So the headline reads on this, SIP Industries announces new nano emulsion products made by Calypso Extracts. They've got three products, and it does look like SIP C is going to be utilizing these products in their own business. The first product is White Lightning Syringes, a flavorless, water-soluble nano emulsion with will be offered in 100 milligram and 300 milligram syringes, allowing the consumers to choose their preferred dosage. Yeah, we're talking squeezing it in your mouth, not in your veins, and you'll be able to see how much you're getting, a dose. They also have Thunder Drops, which is a water-soluble flavor enhancer that can be dosed and added to any beverage of choice, and they've got multiple flavors here and multiple dosages, kind of like liquid Kool-Aid with benefits. Just drop it in your water. And last but not least, they have Fire Water Shots. It is a health-designed cannabis beverage that provides a quick onset to start or end a day. The product is made with THC, CBN, CBD, Delta 8, and other cannabinoids to ensure the perfect full-spectrum experience and will be offered in multiple doses. So there's your three products. And as a matter of fact, 
That's the very next piece of news. SIP Industries announces first product launch of 2022. Which one of the three do you think it is? The company announces the launch of its first product of the year, Nano CBN Drops. Nano Drops, addressing the growing cannabis sleep aid market. CBN is one of the cannabinoids that are in cannabis. There's I don't know, hundreds of cannabinoids that they're discovering. They first thought there was 42, then 72. They keep finding more cannabinoids. And each cannabinoid is a chemical, if you will, and each chemical does something different to us. And CBN, well, it causes, well, it does a lot of things, but the primary thing, it's what makes everybody sleepy. That's the sleep agent, CBN. So this could be a perfect sleep agent to help insomnia without the side effects that come with pills. They tell us Sip Industries has finalized its formula with the primary ingredient being high grade nano emulsified CBN. Similar to CBD, the benefits of CBN include anti-inflammatory, pain relief, and enhanced sleep quality. These drops will be in 100 and 200 milligram dosages which can be added sublingually under the tongue or in any choice beverage. The CBN drops are completely water soluble. And they go on to talk about how sleep aids are a big market and people are looking for safe alternatives to get to sleep. And the last piece of news that they had come out came out today. Sip Industries signs new beverage distribution agreement with Nirvana Wholesale for Major Hemp Delta 8 beverages. Major Hemp. Well, here we go. I don't think they're talking beer. I don't think they are, but let's check this out. Sip Industries announces it has come to terms with Nirvana Wholesale to distribute a new line of Delta 8 infused beverages under the legacy Major Hemp brand. Uh -huh. Sip Industries has worked on beverage formulations with Nirvana utilizing its proprietary nano emulsion process to develop a new line of Delta 8 infused beverages. With its successful development, Nirvana placed their first order that will be shipped initially to the Houston area targeting over 100 plus vape and smoke shops. Additional regions in Texas are also expected to place initial orders. Delta-8 THC is a naturally occurring chemical compound that is found in very small, minute amounts in hemp and cannabis plants. Delta-8 is typically used to calm nausea, boost appetite, relieve pain, boost mental health, while producing a euphoric and relaxed state. Major Hemp Delta-8 comes in 16 ounce bottles, including 100 milligrams of Delta-8. The initial launch will include two flavors of lemon sweet tea and fruit punch with additional flavors planned. So there you go. We got a couple new products. You've got this Delta 8 drink. Now folks, Delta 8, <laughs> it's been under scrutiny. Some states are making it illegal for Delta 8 to come out because you can get high from Delta 8, but it is found in hemp in very small, minute amounts. But if you gather up enough of it, it can get you high. So it came from hemp, so it's legal. So this is a very interesting product. Then you've got their CBN drops. The sleep market is huge. I think they could do very well with that. Uh, put that next to that five hour boost, have that uh, five hour sleep you know, right next to it with your CBN drops. So I think the company has made a turn. Looks like they're getting away from alcohol uh, with hemp, CBDs. It doesn't look like alcohol is in their mainstream anymore. They're now gonna start working with other types of beverages that are not related to alcohol, but will put some sort of euphoric feeling to you. So let's go check out that chart and see what activity was on it today. Now this is actually some pretty big news. They made a deal today, but more than that, they've got another product. They tell us here, Sip Industry signs new beverage distribution agreement with Nirvana Wholesale for major hemp Delta 8 beverages. Hmm. Sip Industries announces it has come to terms with Nirvana Wholesale to distribute a new line of Delta 8 infused beverages under the legacy Major Hemp brand. Lots of news there. So Nirvana is going to be a distributor for their products. That's great. They've got a new product here, a Delta 8 infused beverage. And hey, look, Major Hemp. 
the beer company. I guess they're not going to use the name for beer. They're going to start using it for their other products. I mean, they already branded it. They might as well use it. Sip Industries has worked on beverage formulations with Nirvana, utilizing its proprietary nano emulsion process to develop a new line of Delta 8 infused beverages. Very interesting. With its successful development, Nirvana placed their first order that will be shipped initially to the Houston area, targeting over 100 smoke shops. Great. Additional regions in Texas are also expected to place their initial orders. So the product isn't being developed. It's already developed and it is now being distributed out. Now, Delta 8. This is interesting. You can read up on Delta 8. Really, Delta 8 comes from hemp. I mean, it's in cannabis, but nobody pays attention to it in marijuana because it's in such small amounts and you got lots of THC there. But the fact is, there's little bitty amounts of Delta 8 in hemp. But if you accumulate all of that Delta 8, it acts like THC and gets you stoned. And that's what a lot of companies have been doing and they've been getting under the law because it is coming from hemp. So some states have taken a hard stance against it. So it has gotten a lot of attention. They tell us here that Delta 8 THC is naturally occurring chemical compound that is found in small traces of hemp and cannabis. Delta 8 is typically used to calm nausea, boost appetite, relieve pain, boost mental health while producing a euphoric and relaxed state. Yes, it does. Major hemp Delta 8 comes in 16 ounce bottles, including 100 milligrams of Delta 8. The initial launch will include two flavors, lemon sweet tea and fruit punch definitely not beer. So you've got a company that was working with hemp beer, CBD beer, obviously gotten out of that. They were quiet for a long time and now in the last few months they've made two deals already, got dis distribution with both companies. Looks like they've got products coming from one of the companies and the products that they've just come out with already, their Delta 8 and their CBN Nano Drops aren't even listed with Calypso. So there's new products coming out. And I think that sleep aid could be a big one. And Delta 8, well, you know, I don't know where this is gonna go because you should be able to sell this in states where hemp is legal, but marijuana is not. And where's hemp legal? Everywhere. So it'll be interesting to see. What is also gonna be interesting to see is that chart. Let's go take a look at that now. SIPC, SIP Industry, six month, four hour chart. It's a big swath. Just shh. I mean, it's wide. I'll give you that. But see here, the high bubble is in the middle of the board and the low bubble is in the middle of the board, not on the ends. And if you just take a quick look, again, high and low in the middle of the board. And on the five minute, high and low in the middle of the board. So she is stuck in a very wide swath. Now, most of this doesn't matter because this is when she wasn't doing anything. There was no news really until January of this year. And right there is it. That's when it all started. People were quite excited and this jumped from four to <laughs> nine. So you had about a 120% jump right here. It held it for a while and then it started to fall away and fell really hard. I mean, fell really hard. And she's hanging around her 200 day SMA. So it is a good average price right now, but you could probably pick this up on a low bounce. She comes down low most of the time. There's four, seven, double zero, four, seven. I'm not going to say the double zeros anymore. And here is seven, one. So, you know, between four and seven is where she's sitting. But remember at six down to four, that is 50% difference right there. So you can get it a lot cheaper if you're patient. But I think this is a good long hold. Most all of your cannabis stocks are going to be good long holds because we're not where we're supposed to be yet. Most cannabis stocks can't get banking. Most of them can't get tax deductions. Most of them can't send their products outside over the state line. It is hard for cannabis companies to really be doing the business the way they could be under the laws the way they are. But once they change, Everything should fly, folks. They'll get tax deductions. They'll get banking. They can move products over the border. And this company, I think, 
This could be a first mover advantage with their Delta 8 beverage. I have not seen any other company with that. I've seen THC, I've seen CBD, I've even seen some CBN products. Although their CBN drops under the tongue, that could be very, very good. Right there next to the five hour, right? Like I said. So this could be a first mover advantage with Delta 8 beverage. And it does get you high and it would be allowed to be sold in every state because it comes from hemp. Oh boy, product could get a lot of attention just for starting st turmoil. So she's going sideways right now. You may want to get a little so you don't forget, but try to buy some on a low bounce. But I think this, like every other stock, is going to surge when laws change. So this too would make a good long hold. And it is like a starter company now. They've gotten rid of their hemp beer, as far as I can tell. Do some more DD, but there's a gap in news there. But go to their site, see if they're still selling major your hemp beer HIPAA I don't think it is selling I think they've turned away from it and have gone over this route okay I think that is everything well I gotta be honest with you after all that discussion about the cannabis market I just want to roll one and chill out well, of course I partake. It's legal in my state. But besides that, even a good book in Genesis 126 says, God gave man all herb bearing seed. Problem is the dispensaries don't give me the seeds. If I want the seeds, they want to charge me 10 to $20 each. Ay, ay, ay. You see how much money can be made in this market? The cannabis market is going to be big, but so is the psychedelic market. And you've got three stocks there that cover actually the psychedelic market, the cannabis market, beverages, and the technology market in the cannabis market and all of it is needed wanted and will get bigger especially when laws change remember folks we are just beginning in this sector the more dd you get the more you're going to know and the more you know the more you're going to grow see you folks